Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses, which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course, which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to our lesson today, where we are going to conclude discussion of chapter three of the research proposal which we say is titled research methodology now this lesson will be looking at methodology matrix table and this is the last subsection the just concluded class has looked at ethical issues or ethical principles or ethical considerations that you as a researcher should uphold as you conduct research. And this becomes very key, especially for us who are social science researchers, because we mainly deal with human subjects. And therefore, you have a section in your proposal where you explain how you will protect your respondents. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of a methodology matrix table, identify the components of a methodology matrix table, and explain the requirements of section 3.10. So we started by looking at the sections of chapter 3 of the research proposal, and we said chapter 3 has got 10 subsections. So far, we have discussed nine subsections and therefore today is our last lesson where we are discussing chapter 3 of the research proposal. When we talk about methodology matrix table is what in is also referred to as operationalization of variables table. The table of operationalization of variables. This is a table in which the components of a research project or thesis or dissertation fit. Now, these components may be objectives, research questions, hypotheses, variables, methods of analysis, methods of data collection, anticipated conclusions, etc, etc. But do you have to have all of them in the same table? The answer is no. They table or the components of the table may differ from one institution to the other and from one discipline to the other. That's why we keep saying that fit the content we are discussing into your discipline or your institution. In chapter 2, we talked about a conceptual framework. And we said in this framework, we normally show how the variables will be measured by use of indicators. So whereas the conceptual framework gives us the variables and their indicators, this methodology matrix table is more explicit than a conceptual framework because it goes further to tell us how you will measure those variables, the type of data that you will collect, and the statistical tools that you will use to analyze them. So conceptual framework, yes, it's a visual picture that tells us how the variables are related and the indicators that are used to measure that variable. But now the table goes further. It does not, it will not only give us the variables and their indicators, but it will go on further to tell us what method of data collection will be used to collect data on that variable? What kind of data will be collected for that variable indicator? How shall we analyze it? And when we're talking about these indicators, they can be objective or they can be subjective. Objectives is the ones that are clear and they are measured by actual measurement then remember 
it is not possible to construct a meaningful data collection instrument without first operationalizing all your variables. So meaning that the methodology matrix or the operationalization of variables table is very key because it clearly tells you that for variable one in my research question one, I will need to use the following instrument and this is the kind of data I'll collect and this is the method of analysis that I will use. So they help you construct a meaningful data collection instrument. So in this section that we call 3.10, the researcher draws a methodology matrix and we have an example of one which has got uh, um, seven components. The components are either an objective or a research question, the type of variable, the indicators, the measurement scale, the method of data collection, the data collection instrument, and the data analysis technique. So you can see for this a particular type of, uh, for this research study, one of the objective was to determine the influence of training on sustainability of community projects. So this has two variables. It has an independent variable which is training and it has a dependent variable which is sustainability of community projects. Now, when you look at a dependent variable from the conceptual framework, three indicators were identified. The first one was number of trainings. The other one was content of the training and then the adequacy of the training module. Then what is the measurement scale? Number of trainings is ratio. The content and adequacy are nominal. What are the methods that we shall use? So for the number of trainings, we shall administer a questionnaire. Then to determine the content and the adequacy, we will use interview guide. And remember, when we have stated these methods of data collection, we are not saying that individually for that indicator, we are only going to use a questionnaire. It means this variable that is called training will be, data on it will be collected using a questionnaire and in-depth interview. So do not look at them like once you have indicator one, then when we talk about a questionnaire, then it means purely that that is the, the method for only that indicator. No, our interest is the variable. Then we also have the instrument. So we'll use a questionnaire and interview guide and then the methods of analysis. So we shall use both frequencies and percentages and we'll use inductive analysis. It is also important to mention that once you have completed writing your proposal, it does not add at 3.10. Immediately you finish 3.10, the next page is a list of all the materials that you have quoted and referred to in your document. And this is called references. Most academic institutions will require you to write references and not bibliography. The difference between the two is that references are the actual one that you have used. Bibliography may include any other material that you may have read, but it is not quoted in your document. So most academic institutions require you to list references. And of course, we again said the number of references that you need to quote may differ from one institution and one discipline to the other. After the references, then you have appendices. So what do you need to append? You need to append appendix one, letter of introduction or letter of, of transmitter where you introduce yourself to your respondents and why you are conducting research. After that, you have from appendix two to appendix X based on the instruments that you have. You may have questionnaire for A, questionnaire for B, interview guide for C, document analysis guide for D, that is for someone who is using four instrument. So once you have completed the instrument, the next appendix is the time or your plan. When will you be doing what? Then budget, how much will be required of you, and then research permit, maps and tables that, are, uh, that you may have used in your document. Please note, 
that when you complete your project thesis or dissertation, you normally expurge time plan and the budget. And this brings us to the end of our lesson and this has also completed the research proposal we started with chapter one then we moved to chapter two and chapter three our next lesson we are going now to start discussing chapter four of now we will not talk about research proposal but we'll be talking about either research project thesis or dissertation thank you for being part of this class please do not forget to subscribe to this channel like and share this video with your friends Comment by asking any question that you have regarding this lesson.